Hi, I'm Angie. I want to welcome you to National Indoor RV Centers, where we specialize in the sales, storage, service, and detailing of only high-end, new, and used coaches. So basically, we do it all. Hi, I'm Angie with National Indoor RV Centers, and today we're going to continue our educational series talking more about paint, specifically ceramic coating. And is it snake oil or is there really value to ceramic coating? It's something we need. Uh, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd, as you may have guessed, uh, Angie knows. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to really dig into the details of what ceramic coating is. What, what is it made of? What's it intended to do? So I kind of went on a little journey to understand what is this product actually uh, promoting and what is it actually protecting us against? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So Mark, what is ceramic coating and what are the benefits? A ceramic coating is just what it sounds like. It's a coating that is applied over the top of the coach that puts a ceramic barrier between the elements and your paint job on your coach. So it is literally just what it sounds like. And what it is, is it's a hardened material that is roughly four times harder than the paint that is on your coach. And the reason for that is it's to protect against discoloration due to elements. It's, it's there to protect against scratches. And, and what it really is, is um, it's 13 microns is what it is. A micron, one single micron, cannot be seen with the human eye. This is 13 microns, and just to put that into perspective for you, 70 microns is the size of one human hair. I, believe it or not, I used to know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's roughly as thin as one-sixth of a human hair. So it's something that is very thin, and it can be applied, and it actually magnifies the gloss on your coach by roughly 35%. So it uh, puts a brightness on your coach while also providing a protection against this really thin membrane between the world and your investment. So is it going to protect my coach against rock chips and say tree branches if they scrape the side? Like how much protection mm -hmm. am I going to get from it? That's a really good question. Uh, let's put this into perspective in a little bit of geometry and some detail. Oh no, uh, geometry. <laughs> <laughs> the hardness on an automotive vehicle that you might buy is anywhere between a 2H and a 5H. Well, what's a 2H and a 5H, right? Um, that is a pencil, believe it or not. Uh, it's the lead density of a pencil. And that is actually how uh, the hardness is measured in paint and wood, things like that, is a pencil test. So an automotive vehicle, has a hardness range of 2H to 5H. And what that does, it says, it will protect against some gravel at a slow moving speed. Well, let's think about that. Um, I think almost every new coach that NIRVC receives has some kind of rock chip damage. Sure. Um, that is not a failure of the driver. It's not a failure of the company that painted the coach. It's how this paint was designed. One of the things that I, I want people to start doing is questioning the manufacturers of the coaches. It's no different than understanding what your def tank is capable of or any other component on your coach. Your paint is equally important. And one of the things that people don't do is think about the chemistry of that paint. They look at the stripes and they say, oh, this is really pretty. But what they don't know is, how hard is my paint? You know, what can I expect out of this paint job? So I think those are questions that customers need to start becoming educated on and understanding what they are. Because if the paint, for example, on this product was a 2H and that was under a baked condition, what happens if this coach had some kind of paint repair outside of the bake booth and it was never rebaked? That area is more than likely less as hard than the rest of it. So I would encourage people to become more educated about their specific coach and the paint that is being applied to their coach and what the expectation of that hardness is. The ceramic coating is actually a 9H. So 9H wow. is four times harder. And what 9H really means is that is as hard as you can get before it becomes tempered glass. And it's also as hard as you can get before you start losing clarity on the coach itself. So the paint color. So that is as hard as you can get before this color has been distorted by this application. So 9H is a really clean, glossy product, 35% higher gloss, uh, that still provides the clarity and as hard as you can get uh, that will protect against a some rock chips. Uh, obviously, you know, if a boulder comes flying at you as you're driving through the, <laughs> through the valley, you're gonna be in trouble, but the general gravel um, discussions, they kind of go away. 
right? So okay. we now have a lot more protection. Um, if you brush across a tree, it's probably not going to scratch your paint unless you drove into the tree. Right, right, <laughs> so, right. so it gives much more protection than what is coming out of the factory, and that's the factory in perfect conditions. We all know that perfect is hardly ever attained. Um, some manufacturers do a really, really good job of providing a good, clean, hard product. Um, we see very little defects. Uh, when those rock chips come in on a lower performing product, we see it very often. So in our last video, we talked a lot about paint defects. Every coach comes in with some kind of defect. As a matter of fact, four out of five cars need to be buffed before we put the ceramic coating on there, and that's a car. So when we talk about that fifth car, we're probably talking about something really, really high end, right? Um, every one of these coaches needs about 30 hours of paint correction before we wow. can even touch it. Uh, and I hear the question a lot, but I wax my coach a lot, I really take care of it. But we talked in the last video about orange peel, about those um, superficial things, swirl marks, uh, all of that stuff just explodes as soon as you put the ceramic coating so on there be because of the cloud. Absolutely. So this is why I don't recommend, so many people say, hey, I can buy this stuff for X amount of dollars and just apply it out at a super show or apply it in my barn. Um, you really can't do that. The, the care really needs to be put in the forefront of it so you can get the intended results afterwards. Um, we, we're going to show a, a before and after ceramic coating example a little bit later, but you can see the tiniest defects are just are highlighted as soon as you put the ceramic coating on. So if it's something you can live with, that's great. But my guess is if you're thinking about putting something like this on your coach to protect your investment, it's probably something you don't want to live in. It, it's something, you know, counterproductive is to say, I'm going to paint over these defects if the whole intent is to apply it so you don't get defects. So that's a big difference. I know I, you know, have watched a lot of ceramic coating videos on YouTube. You can see it. It's it looks like it's fairly easy to apply. It's this, you know, really thin liquid, but it's the prep that's the timely. 30 hours, right? That's 30, what you said. 30 hours, and, <laughs> and that's a new coach. So if you have a coach that's one year in the field, six months in the field, 10 years in the field, you really want to make sure that this coach is corrected properly. So um, when's the right time to do it? I would say as soon as you can after you make that initial investment. And, and the reason for the 30 hours is he wants somebody that's qualified to do this. So at NIRVC, everybody that is qualified to do this has been certified by the manufacturer of the product that we use. So we don't just take someone and say, hey, wipe this on, which is maybe what you may get uh, right. in one right. of these super show kind of applications or, or one of these, uh, you know, these low cost providers. Um, I think back to, I'm dating myself, but Earl Scheib, right? We'll, <laughs> right. we'll paint any car for $99. I'm Earl Scheib. I'll paint any car for just $99.95. This week only, you'll get polyurethane additive free. A $19.95 value absolutely free. So I actually did that when I was 16 oh, years no. old. Um, they don't care if there's Bondo on it, a dent, you know, there's a bowling ball in the middle of the trunk. Over. They're painting over it. And, and when I see some of these price points, I'm going, boy, they're probably just wiping over everything that's on there. So I think the benefit of of doing all of that upfront work by somebody who knows how to detail the coach, who knows how to apply the coach, makes the price point worth it. it you get into it, what you you know you put out of it. Sure, mm -hmm. always, Absolutely. always. <laughs> so walk me through the process because it doesn't sound like it's something I should do on my own. Don't do it on your own. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the process starts with our last video. So as soon as the coach arrives, whether it's from the manufacturer or a customer decides they want to do this product, the first thing we're gonna do is take our paint inspection checklist. We're gonna go over every one of those items and evaluate the coach. What needs to be repaired in terms of the paint of the coach? Um, some of these things may just come from the factory with a couple defects in them. Some of them may be a customer was you know, got 15,000 miles on it, now they're entertaining this, this process. So we follow all of the paint standard and make sure that everything is met. This is where the correction comes in. So if, let's say in some perfect world, there's zero defects, we would start buffing this coach. And that's where we would probably spend about 30 hours getting this finished. This is a nice looking coach. Um, it's, it's went through the buffing process. Um, but first the paint corrections need to be made then we would buff them out. Let's say we didn't find any. Uh, we would start this 30-hour buffing process 
we will eventually find it as soon as we start buffing. So then there would be additional paint corrections or initial paint corrections, depending on what uh, status the coach is in. Then we would go into that correction process. If your coach is under warranty, we would talk to the warrant uh, manufacturer and say, this is what we found during the buffing process and, and work with them. Uh, if this is a 10 year old coach, we would talk to the customer and say, this is what we found in have them elect to, to have that repaired or not. Then after all of that paintwork has been done, the coach would be buffed in that area again, and then we would go into the application of the product, which, like you said, seems very simple. You just put it on a rag and wipe it, but there's a lot more to it. No, <laughs> it, it it's, the, it's the manner in which you're applying it, and that's why we put so much care into sending the folks down to the manufacturer and learning how the manufacturers intended this to be applied, and that's what we want to replicate go to the subject matter experts, and we're not the subject matter experts until we go there. Right, get that <laughs> little certification. Yes, absolutely. So start to finish, how long will all this take? Again, it depends on the status of your coach. It, once we get going on it, it's about 30 hours to buff it, and then we're gonna apply the ceramic coating. That really takes about three days to cure. So what we would wanna do is say, really, we're gonna give this a week to cure because what we don't wanna do is have environmental conditions dictate the hardness and cure time of your coach. So if it's a cool, rainy season, it's winter time and you're in, the, in Nashville, for example, um, it would take every bit of a week. If it's in the summertime and you're in Dallas, that would probably take three days to cure. So we say, you know, 30 hours to buff and one week to really cure this coach. Because what we don't want to do is is have you leave with a hardness that doesn't meet the manufacturer's expectations of that 9H, right? Um, otherwise, you're going to have chips. <laughs> yeah. So when you say the curing process takes three days, can I be living in my coach during that time or does it really just need to be not used? It needs to be not used. We're gonna keep this thing in the paint and body shop. We don't wanna park it outside while it's curing. We wanna keep it indoors, separated okay. from the environment. We, so obviously we wouldn't want you living in there. We wanna keep this thing buttoned up, undisturbed, and just let the process occur naturally. So it's the perfect time for me to plan a little vacation. It is. The great thing about Nashville is we have so many dealerships across the country that you're probably close to a relative or something interesting to see. Just plan around it, plan your trip around it. Let us let us take care of your coach while you go ahead and have some right. fun. And we're actually in Fen City, so there's <laughs> lots to see and do and yes. continue that education of where am I and what can I see while I'm, you know, waiting my, on my coach? Absolutely. <laughs> so after the buffing is completed, mm -hmm. what's the next step? After the buffing, we don't just wipe on the, the, the product, right? We have to wipe down the coach with 100% alcohol, uh, every square inch of it that's going to get the ceramic coating because, uh, believe it or not, there's, there's things in the air that you just can't see. So we're sure. trying to eliminate dust, filaments from towels, things like that all have to be wiped free before we apply the ceramic coating. So after the coach is wiped down again with this denatured alcohol, now we start the application, which is not a very straightforward uh, Mr. Miyagi wax on, wax off, right? It's, it's a specific pattern like Mr. Miyagi talks about, which is a pull and push away, pull and push away. So it, again, not, not to talk again about these, these smaller shops that just think it's just something you can wipe on. There really is a science to how, how the product is applied. And then after it's applied, there's a flash off time and that can be anywhere from 15 seconds to 45 seconds, but you can actually see the product chemically changing as it bonds into the paint that's on the coach already. And once that chemical reaction happens, then they come in and they'll start buffing it down with a lint-free cloth. So it's very labor intensive. It takes about a week to do a 40 foot coach amazingly labor intensive as I watch on a 45 foot coach keeping track of where you've put the coating and then making sure that you don't overlap it because that's a that can be a problem as well correct? overlapping is a big problem right we cannot overlap because as soon as you do that now I talked about the chemical change you're now chemically changing the ceramic coating right so um, it's just you're gonna lose clarity you're not gonna have the same adhesion properties that you thought you had because it's not bonding to paint anymore it's bonding to the ceramic coat over it so uh, really the it doesn't have to be here, but training, training, training. Make sure you get somebody who knows what they're doing. This is not a Sunday afternoon project. This is a very detailed process. I was surprised that we did it right over the top of the diamond shield. 
Yes, uh, you can do it over the diamond shield. It just adds additional protection. I, I get that question a lot. Like, do I have to pull off my diamond shield? Is this product good over diamond shield? Believe it or not, this product can be applied to windshields. It can be applied to tires. Uh, they sell applications that you can put on the furniture inside the coach. Uh, it really is a barrier against everything. And you can feel it. You, you talked about that. You can run your fingers over the affected area and you can tell the change in the smoothness. So if I glide my finger over here, I can feel a pull as soon as I get to an area where he hasn't applied that ceramic coating yet. So um, the other question is, how do I even know it's on there? You can actually feel it. So yes. we, um, I think everybody has tried to slide a towel across the hood of their car to see if their wax job was good. Same concept. You can see it and feel it. Yes. Arts and crafts time. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> this is actually gonna be our hardness test. So we've talked earlier about how ceramic coating is four to four and a half times harder than something that has not been ceramic coated. This is actually how paint is tested in the industry. A pencil. With a pencil. Really? So this is how a building that's been painted is tested for hardness, how a an automotive vehicle is tested for hardness. They take a pencil and they look at the values of that pencil, the lead, and you'll notice every one of them is different. That is degrees of heaviness in the lead. Okay. So what they do is they put that range, and I talked about the automotive range, is 2H to 5H, and the test is really what pencil breaks the paint. Whatever pencil breaks the paint, the pencil just beneath that, that's so how hard it is. actually going into the paint you itself. Will, you will see it and hear it cutting through the Yikes. paint. Okay. So, uh, Again, the automotive industry is 2H to 5H. That's what they recommend. I cannot emphasize enough to really become educated on your manufacturer of your coach's parameters on their paint hardness. And I would, again, encourage you to not only find out how hard it is coming out of the factory, is that uh, with a bake process? And if not, is the bake included if any repairs are done or is part of my coach going to be hardened to a bake process and then any repairs that are done through the factory because things happen sure um will those not be to the parameters of the paint uh in the paint spec that the manufacturer is using should tell them but i think it's important for the consumer to really be educated on just how hard that is because when they brush against a tree they may think that the paint is soft maybe it's meeting those parameters. So I would know before you deal with it. So this is technically the actual correct way to test All paint right. hardness. So I'm gonna okay. show you how this works. So this door is an old luggage door, it's been damaged. What we did is we applied ceramic coating over a half of it, no paint correction done whatsoever. Okay. And then this half, all we did was buff it. So the first thing I noticed right away is you see these little half moons over here? I do, I can see them like almost like little like check marks, like hyphens, but a little bit of a curve yes. to them. Now look over here, do you see those? No, I don't see anything there. So what happened is those little marks that you're seeing, those are either imperfections in the door itself when they were sanding it, or when they were when they were buffing the coach out in the factory. And, so and when now we did you that see ceramic these. coating, it now magnified you that. see everything. So 35% more gloss. You now see these tiny little imperfections. I cannot stress enough that when somebody says, oh, but I just bought the coach or I take really good care of my coach, you see everything. I'm seeing things in here that I don't see over here. So that right. is the first thing that is to be noted. But if we had done the paint correction or the buffing, we, those would be gone. You would buff that right okay. out. Yep. So that's that's the important part of taking that that 30 hours and really doing a good paint right. correction. <laughs> so these kind of things, you don't see them as you're detailing your coach. So let's walk through the process. This is a 2H pencil. Okay. And technically, if this was an automotive vehicle, this should not cut the paint. And we're lucky it doesn't. Okay. So you don't hear anything and you see that it's just a smooth glide and across there, like right? Wipe it right off. Yep. Yep. Okay. Over here, same thing. So I'm not cutting the paint. And so it now, barely leaves any. No, like, you can just yeah. kind of wipe it away. So what we do then is we go up a size. So now we're looking at a 3H pencil. And what will this do to the paint? You hear that? Ugh. So I'm already in trouble. Oh yeah, it's definitely left a mark. So it's cutting through the paint. You can hear it, you can see it. Yeah. That's so I would rate good. this paint as a 2H okay. because the 3H pencil broke it. That, and that's 2H how that works. is automotive? That's automotive for the minimum standards. And what that says in the automotive world is very slowly, this will protect against gravel. 
Okay. So that is the bare minimum for wow. slow moving, light gravel. Yeah. We take the 3H pencil here and we're still okay. Yeah. Still wipes away. So we keep going up. I'm not gonna go up anymore over here because it failed. Because we already know. Yes. Right. But let's look at the 9H. So the 9H is the one that our product says this is good for. If I try it over here, oh. it just, it tears there's the that paint tree right branch. half, right? <laughs> so there's your tree branch. <laughs> there's your tree People branch. People don't realize, like, yes. I always cringe. Mm -hmm. they, like, they can be so costly. Yes. So, so now yeah. we do the same test over here, and it's a little skipping, but nothing. Oh, yeah. He, you, yeah. The thing I want to note about this is I applied this about five hours ago. So oh. this has not even been fully cured, and I can not get this pencil to push. Yeah. But if I come over here, it just rips right through it. Yeah. So when Very we talk cool. about snake oil, I'm a nerd, right? <laughs> I want to know how and why and who, who validated this. Wow. To me, this is a validation test. Yeah. So if, if I was going to be validating a, a supplier, if I was to onboard this manufacturer for the paint job, I would say, how do you know how hard this is? Right. I would probably get that blank stare and you know, they'd say, well, let me go call the paint rep. Um, that's not good enough for I know me. How to test it now. <laughs> now you know how to test yeah, it. Yeah, so, I had no idea. That's very interesting. Yeah, right. and you can do this almost on any surface, right? Not glass, but wood. You can do this with wood and see how hard the wood is. Uh, it's, it's a really good way to understand what it is. So, so durability wise, you, you can see the difference, right? When, when you know the difference, uh, you know, it's very obvious. Yeah, very mm -hmm. obvious. And like you said, only five hours cured. So this is going to get even harder. Imagine in a week, yeah. right? It's, wow. You're going to really have some good results here. So now that my coach is completed and ceramic coated, some of the benefits, I don't have to worry about uh, water spots anymore, right? No more water spots, uh, very little water spots, uh, no bugs. It's a lot easier to clean the bugs off of this thing. Uh, you know, you to the coach. And now do I need to wax my coach anymore? It's up to you. <laughs> what I would say is if you're one of these people that likes to just keep tabs on your car and understand exactly what's going on or your, it's your RV, hobby. right? It's, <laughs> it's your hobby. For me, it's therapy. I like to go out there and I like to touch it and admire it. Uh, then I would say absolutely go out there and wax it. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, it's not going to provide much more benefit. Again, the ceramic coating is more about that barrier between the elements. So is really what the wax is anyways, right? It's just a longer life and it's much harder than a wax. So you don't need to. If your wife is really annoying and you want to get out of the house, go <laughs> or vice versa. Or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today as we went over the ceramic coating process. I hope that you found this educational and you learned something today. I know that I did. Make sure you stay tuned as we will be putting out more videos like this to um, educate myself and the viewers more. So again, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.